First off, we are both sick, so this will be a blast mm -hmm. to make. I tried making a vlog earlier, it failed horribly. He was there, he heard it all. It was, it was, it was messy. Bad. It, was, <laughs> it was bad. It was... My thoughts didn't come out in logical human language. Uh, something, yeah. my brain's retarded. Also, you yeah, had this strange kind of Nazi thing going on. Yeah, I was like all like, Reich, not dying in <laughs> German. I don't even speak German, but... Yeah. I don't know, you know. But anyway, yeah, today's video is about happiness. Happiness! Which, you know, is one thing we still are when we're, when we're sick. We're still happy. We are. We are still um, happy. First up, we're gonna go through the forum replies. Actually, Dean's gonna do that because he made a yes. little mistake. Go. Dan replied that your values and perspectives on life determine happiness, like what you attach value to. You may have Gina saying that we have our own goals. Uh, everyone has its own uh, personal goals, so happiness has to be one of your goals in order to desire it. But happiness can also be a learning process, like learning from your mistakes, etc. As you go, you grow more uh, stable and into a more stable and happy person. John Borg said long-term happiness is impossible because it's an emotion, a satisfying of needs, so you always want more. Then we have Hiba who says being good to others, building relationships and positive thinking are the main uh, like, you know, pillars of, of happiness. Then we have Dylan. Dylan said that happiness is a warm gun and Yoda will cut you, bitch. That's Dylan. Then we have Jason Blank saying that being happy with yourself and who you are and having a goal to stick to are the most important things in the long run. Then we have Zach saying meaning is what's important, like your life having significance, something you dedicate your time to. Vic who said that happiness uh, is part of an active thought process and is under your control, like it's more of a mental thing and not so much determined by external factors. Vic said that? Yeah. That's a, you know, it's a chick who says that. Props. Props, props, to Vic. props to Vic. Props yes. to Vic, you know. How mm. sexist are we when we're sick, right? <laughs> Carla, Carla actually made a list of things uh, which you need to be happy, and it was a good list. I mean, check it out. Go to the discussion. I think it's on the first or second page. Link in the sidebar. Check that out. It's a cool list. XZ, he says happiness is a state uh, and cannot last, so it's temporary, much like but someone else here said I don't know the name anymore. Then you have Lewis saying that setting conditions to be happy is what most people do. Most, most people have rules in their heads when they can be happy. That's a good point, we're gonna go into that later. Yes. Ryan, who said, posted this awesome pyramid of happiness. Like, what do you need to be happy? Your basic needs, and you go higher, like your physical or something needs, and you have like social needs and stuff. Pyramids are cool. Pyramids are awesome. Yeah, Egypt. Um, Egypt. Then we have Marek. He says happiness is not a goal, but a lifestyle. So you can't plan it or, you know, do it like, you know, Today I want to be happy, it's like a lifestyle, it's, it's an active process. And then last but not least we have RIF who says, uh, and this is awesome by the way, it's the best reply. Be king of yourself, practice the three principles, and happiness follows. Awesome. Bam. That's awesome. cool. That is the bomb. King of yourself, Be bitches. king of yourself. I like that. King Especially of following the three power principles. Happiness does follow if you follow the three power principles. <laughs> just naturally. Guys. Naturally, just exactly. Naturally. We also have video replies by Max Ren, Vinay, XZ, and Kung Fu Anthrax. Aight, now we break it down for shizzle. For shizzle, motherfuckers, yeah. Skeet, skeet, nigga. What, what do I mean by that, skeet, skeet? That hurry up or something? What is that? Happiness. Yes. Guys, happiness. <clears throat> First of um, all, like what we're talking about is like, um, like everybody knows people, or you know, a lot of you may be like that, who are like always in a flow. They like have this flow thing going, and they have the, their life and their self structured in a way that they seem to have this very solid state of happiness. I mean, everyone has ups and downs, but you have a lot of people who seem to have it, like, have it down and have this kind of, you know, being happy with themselves and seem to have that really as a default state. Now, what we're, like, talking like about... Like us bitches, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we are, we are like that. We, I don't remember the last time I really felt uh, down. Yeah. I don't remember that. I feel pretty much good all... I'm, I'm sick as hell at the moment, guys. I'm dizzy and shit. I, don't, I feel good. I mean, I don't remember the last time I didn't feel good. Uh, of course, it's not like, like woohoo, good, but, you know, good. So yeah, that's what, we're, what we mean. Like, just a stable, solid, happy, uh, feel good about yourself lifestyle. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And how to attain that. The requirements for people to feel like this 
you are basically on three levels. Like the pyramid posted by Ryan, um, I'd break that down to three levels. First is your basic needs, survival, you know, food, shelter, all that. Second are your social needs. Social needs are comprised of a good uh, circle of friends, reliable friends that you can trust. Meaningful relationships, like a girlfriend in your life. A meaningful, loving relationship and good friends. People are social, we're all, you know, instinctively social. Of course, we're not saying that, for example, that you would die if you don't have good friends or don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. We're not saying that. I mean, we're just saying that, you know, to have that really solid stability, you need, like, your brain has to know on some level, like, look, I'm okay when it comes to social interaction. I have a social background, I have social connections that validate me in a, in, in a deep sense. Also, like when it comes to having like a partner, having a boyfriend or a girlfriend, I mean, we're not saying that you can't be happy without, but for most people, not having one for a long period of time may, you know, mess with your long-term yeah, happiness. Yeah, exactly, because these things um, are actually hardwired into your brain. They have become biological needs almost. Like, human needs are based on survival and procreation. Your basic, uh, most rudimentary biological needs are survival and procreation. A loving relationship falls into procreation. You get that chemical sort of reaction in your brain, you feel a lot better in a relationship. Same with friends. The fact that back in the day you did not survive, like as a primitive sort of you know, ape man thing, you didn't survive on your own, you had to have the, have the pack, that is survival. So that need for social interaction and the need for being in a uh, group, like the, the herd mentality people have, that is basically tying into a hardwired process in your brain for survival. People are I social like, creatures. I like how you refer to like the caveman era as back in the day. Back <laughs> in the day. That's good. <laughs> back when we were young, yeah. <laughs> Number three is meaning. That's basically the third and final pillar uh, and requirement of, of long-term happiness. So, basic needs for survival, social needs, and meaning in your life. With meaning, I mean anything that you can dedicate your time to and have uh, get satisfaction out of. Like let's say six years from now you look back on your life that you will be proud of what you did. You will find that your life was not wasted. That kind of meaning is important to um, continuously feel good about yourself and what you're doing. These three pillars are like, are definitely the most important things. There's still other factors that may impact your happiness. For example, like one big thing that definitely has a huge impact on most people and that's kind of subconscious and most people don't really realize it is the rules you set for yourself like subconsciously you may have built up a set of rules that like your brain has started to believe in like i can only be happy if i have this it's through you know whatever social conditioning your own set of beliefs whatever you have this set of rules that has accumulated where you say like well, I can't be happy right now because I'm doing really bad at my job. Exactly. Or... Yeah, most people do not feel like they can be happy if they do not uh, have certain criteria that are met. They look forward to, to the raise they're going to get, or to the new car, or to um, holidays, or whatever. But until that criteria is met, they feel that they have no reason to be happy. They feel like, now I can be happy, but when I get that, I'll be happy. That's what I look forward to. I will get that, then I will feel a surge of good emotions, on to the next thing I look forward to. Yeah, consumerism is a huge, has a massive impact on this like subconscious rule set that most people have for themselves. They have this thing where they feel like when they buy something, you know, could be like really trivial stuff, but just stuff that they've gotten fixations towards, then they suddenly feel happier about themselves. <clears throat> While the funny thing there is that that's the kind of happiness that you can generate for yourself without doing that stuff. I did it for a long time, I'm sure you did it too. It's yeah. like, it's something that roots itself so subconsciously. Funny thing is, it's so easy to just have that feeling of happiness all the time when you let go of that kind of, you know, mindset towards consumerism. Yeah. Most of the desires that you get that make you happy are superficial and in themselves hold, should not hold no power over your, your happiness. Getting good grades on a test, uh, getting that new car, whatever. Take good grades on a test, for example. People who get bad grades feel bad, people who get good grades feel good, gen generally. What does that mean? If you get bad grades on a test, what does that mean? You have to do it again? You have to spend another couple of weeks studying? Is that it? Is that why you cannot feel happy? Like, your happiness is so precious to you, it's such a valuable thing to have, that why should you put it at the mercy of things which are so superficial, or so meaningless in the long run, 
as a race or a good test. Of course, we're not saying that letting go of these rules is a fix for everything because if you don't have those three key things, then letting go of these three rules can be a start, but it definitely is not, you know, for, you know, if you're someone who's in a more of a depressed state, there's most likely something in those three pillars that needs work. Yes, it happens to most people at some point in their lives is they lack in one of those three needs and most of the time it's either the second or the third. People who do not have good friends, people who do not have a relationship for a long time and begin to feel subconsciously frustrated. People who do not have meaning in their lives. You graduate from college, you don't know what to do and you feel like something's missing. This is very, very, very common. What most people do is they will impulsively, <clears throat> instinctively try to find things to latch on to, to give them short-term happiness to fix that, not realizing the deeper problem, which is that one of these three pillars is lacking. People continue to go down that path. Exactly. And they end up actually, you know, they just keep going, like until they're like 40 and 50 or something, and then they realize like, shit, like what? they feel this lack and they feel like they fucked up yeah. and like they haven't they feel like they kind of miss the calling, miss the meaning of what they really could do with their life. In the end, it comes down to creating yourself. Basically, you're missing certain things to make yourself happy, and those are things you can, for a big part, create mentally, and for another part, you have to create practically. What you want to do is think about the problem at hand, think about the issues at hand, and fix them practically. Now, one thing that I actually haven't quite figured out completely myself is, aside from all these concrete things, there seems to be this really abstract stuff, like, you know, when it comes to having a core, good, positive vibe. And meditation can really help you a lot uh, in attaining that and, and maintaining that. For example, I myself, I, I naturally have a very, very, uh, like, positive vibe at the core. You know, I, I, I very easily am happy and amused with everything that's going on, even when things are going bad. This is kind of an area that I haven't really figured out completely myself. I'm talking about like really the your core emotional attitude towards life, making that a very positive one rather than a neutral or a negative one. I think a lot of it has to do with realizing, just knowing, not believing, really knowing just how much control you have over yourself. Um, most people end up in a spiral of negativity where you either have a victim mentality where you search for uh, sympathy or um, attention from other people to fill up the gap in your own personality or your own uh, neediness. And other people end up in a negative sort of thinking pattern where you just become pessimistic towards things. Yeah, actually I think that's a really good point. I think what you mean is it has a lot to do, if not everything, with making an identity out of your situation exactly. or not. Like, for example, like you might be working at a job that you hate, or your parents might be really keeping you down, like <clears throat> talking talking down on you for some reason. Whatever, you're in a situation and you make an identity out of that. What I mean by that is you like you just start telling yourself on um, perhaps a very subconscious level, like, man, I mean I'm I'm fucked up right now because my job sucks, or cause, you know, my situation at home is horrible, uh, this sucks, I'm in a bad place, this this is horrible, and the fact that these thoughts start looping somewhere in your head kind of creates this identity for yourself, like, I am now depressed. And that will actually affect your identity. Your identity will become that. But if you're someone who more consciously tries to keep that aside and tries to, like, create a distance between who you are and the bad stuff or the good stuff that's going on in your life, and you say, like, well, look, you know, this bad stuff is going on and it's affecting me, you know, it's not fun, but I mean that's fine. It's okay. Like I'm still very positive at my core. I mean that that doesn't necessarily have to change who I am, and I mean I still feel good about myself. Like I'm gonna take myself an example. Uh, back in high school, I was in a victim mentality. I was the kind of person that through a few bad experiences um, saw myself subconsciously as a victim. I was out for sympathy. I felt that when something bad happened to me, it was not my job to fix it. It was the other people's job to have pity, to sympathize with me, and to recognize the fact that I was having trouble with that. And I put that responsibility on other people. In that position, it's very easy to subconsciously take the victim mentality and make it into an identity. You feel entitled to that sympathy. You feel entitled to people's attention. You feel like something, like you've been done wrong. 
and other people need to fix that. That is something you never want to do. You always want to be aware of the power you have over yourself as well as the responsibility you have to keep yourself under control and keep yourself in a state of mind that you want to be in. Because you are the only person who can eventually make that change. You decide your identity. You decide your positive or negative core. You are the person. You are the person in charge of your own life and your own character. No one else. Power! Yeah. We hope you guys are happy. We hope you guys are happy. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. Also, I think yeah. it's important for all the people to come to, to come to iPower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be happy. To be happy. Yeah. It's, it works. It works. Yeah. iPower it it works.